Hey, what's happening YouTube? This is your boy Cowboy right here in the Dirty South at Premier Leather Crafters. Late night grinding, but I was doing a project for a client of mine and I thought that it was a prime opportunity to stop because it, uh, I had an epiphany, a brainstorm, brain idea, light bulb, whatever the case may be. I thought that this was a good time to do this little video because, and this video is dealing with burnishing. There is nothing that can, one of the things that can set your work apart more than anything else is a good edge on whatever piece you're working on, be it a purse, a belt, a cuff, a watch band, gun holster, whatever. That edge is really what says you take your time and you love what you're doing. That little detail right there can set your work apart from everybody else. Now, all the time, uh, sometimes, you know, you have these, some crafters out here, they don't like the edge coat, they don't like the gum track, or they have something to say about that. They, some, some people even say that it's cheating because the edge coat leaves that little plastic uh, finish look on there. You know, hey, look, to me, there are no right and wrong in leather crafting. It's what the crafter feels. That's basically what this all boils down to, ladies and gentlemen. It boils down to what the crafter feels. Now, those are some of those more advanced crafters, some of those old school crafters. They still on the old school way. Now, I like the old school way because in the time, in a crunch time, especially when you're doing a lot of projects and you might run out of material and you don't have a uh, a leather supply store close by so you have to know those old school techniques to get you the same result and will get you by now there are some crafters overseas uh, I do know primarily in Japan who those guys do some great work and I even bought some of those tools but they use a um, wood burner tool and the tips make sure you do, if you're going that way make sure that you use the where you can adjust and change out the tips but the tools that they have and i have them in my toolbox somewhere but i don't uh i'm not going to get through them to them right now but they're made out of brass and they'll fit into the end of that wood burning tool and that's how they use what they use to get a nice burnished edge because the heat from the wood burner is basically melting and burning those fibers together. Now, anybody who knows anything about burnishing knows that burnishing is basically friction, friction and heat. And the heat is generated off of the friction, which will melt the fibers of the leather together to give it that nice coating. It does it on its own. It does it on its own. But when you're moving and popping, and you have a lot of product that's out there, then yes, sometimes you find somebody came up with a tool, those little brass tips that will heat and get you through that and it just speeds up the process. Now, you guys pause for a minute. Now, this was, and I'm back. Now, this was before I actually uh, knew about those and especially starting out because you guys know if you've been following my videos long enough to know, you know that two things. My videos are primarily targeted toward the newer crafters, the beginners to intermediate crafters who don't have a lot of money, but they want to get off into this business, uh, into this in industry. And those crafters who they, they, they might not can command or charge the same prices as some of us uh who've been doing this for a while but they still want their work to look good now you can have some uh or, or those crafters who they might not have the uh the, the the steady hand or the patience and they might have a little flaw in the, into their stamping or their carving or their tooling work whatever have you but a nice edge can separate that and it'll take away from that but that's getting off into something else but i was doing this belt for a client of mine and i started reminiscing about when i didn't have all of these edge burnishing tools. I didn't have an edge rounder. I didn't have uh, the, the burnishing tools. Now, this is a Gen 1. This is the first one that I bought when I first started learning about burnishing. Uh, 
And you can see that I altered this a little bit. Uh, simply cut that tail end off. This is the, what it originally looks like. And you can see that honeycomb end. And I, I used the whole entire piece to burnish. So if there's not a groove that's, that's, that, that I can fit into this, uh, I still can use this part to burn it. I just turn it over and get it. And I even stick this into the holes of belts and projects that uh, might have holes in them. And I want to burnish that in too so I can utilize that. But that's why I bought another one. But this one came off of the Wish app. Actually, I bought three of these. This right here came as a set from the Wish app. Some people don't like Wish because it's Chinese products, but hey, look, at the, again, you guys, minimize your spending on the front end to maximize your profits on the back end. These are doing the same thing that this that I bought from Tandy is doing. Now, even though I altered this one and I altered it to put it into my drill because I wanted more revolution and spin to create more friction and heat on my pieces. The problem that I ran into over a period of time of constantly using this, and I set this in a drill press, drilled the hole down in there. Now this is a piece from a Harbor Freight and is basically just a, a, a shoulder bolt that's been filed and sanded down smooth so I can put it into my chuck of the drill and spin. But over a period of time, uh, this starts to, is so much spinning going on, my, my uh, tool started wobbling like this and it didn't get me the same result anymore. Now, I still can use it, but I just can't use it in the drill chuck. Now, which made me buy this one. But when I saw that it came in a set of three, and all three of these are different tools. Because as you can see, the grooves are all different sizes. So let me turn this up and let you match that up better. All different sizes and widths. And I use all three. Even the, the round dial, and you guys can see that I drilled my hole right through the center of that, crossed out the T. Let me back up so you guys can see that. Crossed out the T, centered that, drilled the hole in there. Now I can put this back into my drill and I run a screw that has been uh, with a washer on the end, put that in there and it still gives me the same revolutions. Now, some crafters out there have gotten, uh, they're really pushing a lot of volume and I can drop this little seed in real quick before we get off into the burnishing tutorial. Uh, you can go to Walmart and they have these big two inch dials or whatever hardware store that you have that sell the wooden dials. You can get those. And if you know somebody who does woodwork or who has, a, I think I'm saying this right, a lathe, a lathe machine, they can put that dial in there and then they'll take out whatever wood tools. Now wood is not my wheelhouse. That's my brother's wheelhouse. He's the wood cra uh, wood uh, carver and burnisher and burning and all that stuff. He, that's on his part. But, um, if you have somebody that has a wood lathe or a lathe machine, then they'll take that and put that knife in there and they'll cut your grooves out. And that's what they did. Uh, some of these older crafters uh, done, they went and bought a wood dial and then they had the grooves cut in to what they needed the width or the spacing to be. Now you can do that. And then uh, and now there's one guy that's around the Birmingham area. And man, and those, those burnishers that he make are beautiful. I mean, $25 for a little piece of wood, but it's supposed to be the hardest of the hardest wood. I don't know what wood that is. Some of you guys may know, but I don't know. But when he stains it and polyurethanes it, it is beautiful. I ain't taking nothing away from that. I just couldn't see me spending $25 on a piece of wood. And it's not going into a wall or a floor of a house or something. But anyway, uh, if you guys got it like that, do that. Find out what's the hardest wood to work with and then go from there. But um, what got me to thinking was some of you crafters out there who don't have the money to get all of these various tools. And this is before edge coat, before I learned the edge coat. Yes, I do use edge coat. And this is before gum track. Yes, I do use gum track. Now that I know a little bit more and I'm further down the road, and being honest with you guys, I didn't start using this stuff until two years ago. 27 years in the game, and I didn't start using edge coat and gum track until two years ago. And sometimes I've been so ingrained with from the old school way that I learned from my uncle and my father of how to burnish that sometimes I don't even use that. You guys can see this. I don't know if you can see that. But 
Oh man, this is how much I've used from wherever it was to here. This is how much I've used. So I don't use this a lot. And even this bottle of, of uh, Edge Coat, it's right there. If you guys can see that. If you can see that, it's right there. So I don't use this stuff a lot because I'm already ingrained with the old school way of doing it. Now, what's the old school way of doing it, cowboy? Let me tell you, you already have the material in your houses or your homes or your shops right now. You don't have to go out here and spend a whole bunch of money on burnishes. Now, I do recommend that you spend a little bit of money on edgers. So if there's anything that you put your money into, put that into your edges because your edges takes the corners off. That is something that I highly recommend. But there, there was also a time that I didn't have it, uh, edgers. And uh, they, these come in every size from a one, two, three, and a four. And then this one is my more aggressive one, uh, this V gauge uh, edger. And it really, it really doesn't take the corner off. It kind of, uh, if this was the corner, it kind of just tapers it a little bit because it's so aggressive and it takes off the, I mean, it takes off a nice piece of that. So uh, if you're using this, you have to really know how hard to press or it's really going to just bevel. I mean, if your hands are straight, it's really going to bevel that edge off of there. Now, which will work good in conjunction with uh, a skyver if you're going to skive some of the edges if you put two pieces of belt. But that's a different video. Now, let's get off into this because uh, we're already at the 11 minute mark and I really don't want to take too long. But what do you do? Well, what's the product that's already in your house? Denim. If you guys can really look at that, you can see that this is the bottom part of a pair of old blue jeans. Now, in the olden days, 1700s, 1800s, the uh, old leather crafters or the leather smiths, as they called them back then, the old leather smiths used dungaree or canvas or cordura. Some of you might know of those words and terms. Now, the dungarees of those times are not the dungarees of this time because that denim material back from then, man, those pants can stand up in a corner by themselves. That's how stiff that stuff was. And then the old canvas or burlap or whatever you want to call it, it was just the stiffness of the material. And when you're rubbing that back and forth on your leather, it really generates a lot of heat. And the more that you press, the more that it compresses and burnish those edges. So let's get off into this because I want to show you guys exactly what you will need one you will need a sponge you can get a bag of these at dollar tree and hey you got water right there at your house already so you don't need to do to get any water but all you will need is a sponge and an old pair of jeans an old pair of jeans and you can take that one old pair of jeans and you can have burnishing materials for days because it will take forever. And I even use these for also for polishing off the, the, the dross or the, the uh, dye sometimes when I'm dyeing different uh, uh, products, uh, especially the Phoebings, the because uh, I use the alcohol base. Uh, I like the alcohol base. I started with the alcohol base and I'll continue to use the alcohol base uh, until I find another reason to use oil base. But, let me get my light situated so you guys, so you can see this. But um, using the Phoebings, um, sometimes it has that, that little dry looking film on the top. So I'll still use a pair of these jeans and I, I have several of these little cut pieces because of uh, dark belts or darker uh, dyed belts. I don't want to use that on uh, like on this blue. So I have another piece that's just for blues or for that shade of area that I can polish off. But anyway, um, all we're gonna take is our sponge with water and I'm gonna wet this edge. Now I've already done part of this before the brainstorm actually hit me and I'm just gonna work this a little bit at a time, but I really wanna make sure that's nice and damp. Really wanna make sure it's nice and damp. Now. And I'm just going to take this, and you can just um, take two pieces of leather, You can, uh, what I use to make my belt keepers at. You can take this and just uh, something hard. That's all that you need. Or you can just get a little block of wood, a little two 
block of wood. And I'm just gonna go back and forth with this. Now the friction and the heat that's coming off of that denim is going to burnish these edges. And I should have showed you guys this. Let me show you this end first. I hope that you can see that. See how you can, the fibers, but burnishing is going to melt these two pieces together to where you won't see that it's two pieces. That's what sets the work apart is because on this belt, it's actually a two piece belt. When I first started out, I wasn't doing two piece belts. I want the customer to see that they had a leather belt through and through, and then they could turn it over to see the flesh side of the belt and they know that it was real raw high. But as I started getting better and progressing in leather work, then uh, I started seeing a lot of crafters putting that one or that 1.5 ounce veg tan on the back side and then you can do some really cool stuff with that too because you can tool on the front and then you can turn around and do some nice tooling on the interior part of the belt now that's the extra video too right there so i'm gonna try to remember to do that but let's get back to this but the trick is you do not want the customer to know that those are two pieces of leather so you're gonna burnish these and burnish these and just that friction and heat are going back and forth. This predates burnishing tools and this is how they've done it. Now, let me show you guys this right here. You see that nice little plasticky look? That's from the heat and the friction. Now, if you look up here where you can see that it's two pieces, you see that right there? But then when you get down here to the burnish part, ah, that's it. That's it. And that's all that you want to do. Now, for those of you who don't have a stitching pony, you know, I didn't always have a stitching pony. You guys have saw the videos where I built this stitching pony. But uh, you just set this thing in between your knees and pull it up and get, get the rubbing. Get the rubbing. And we're going to rub this. We're just going to wet, moisten this up a little bit. Predates gum track predates edge coat all of that is just good old elbow grease and friction and that's all that it is and it's with denim denim blue jean material if you can get a hold to some canvas and you can just cut you out some little six section squares because you can burnish that stuff use it over and over again you can use one forever and that's all you need to do is just create the heat. So you don't have to go out here and buy a DC motor or try to scalve, salvage a DC motor from a junkyard or some old plant or somewhere and then try to find a way to mount your rod and mount your, 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 your burnishing wood in there. You save all that money and just go with some good old elbow grease. One arm gets tired, you switch it over, do the other one. And guess what? It's saving you a little bit of money on your power bill too because that motor is not draining any power. Well, this is not draining any power. So you just do it until it gets nice and hot. You don't have to order those brass tips and then buy a wood burner machine to heat it up. You're just using good old elbow grease until you get the look, look at that, that plasticky look. It's the same thing that this is going to do, same thing that this is going to do. Now, well, cowboy, well, why do you use this? Now, I'm going to tell you, here it is again. I really want my edges, ooh, y'all. It's almost 10 o'clock down here, and it's 84 degrees outside. It's hot as fish grease down here. I don't know what's going on, but I must have did something in a form of life because it's hot. But anyway, um, I really want my edges to pop, if anything. I mean, of course, you want your tooling work and all of that stuff to stand out. Yes, you want that to, to, to happen. But a nice edge coat is like all right, you just washed up your truck. You got that Z71 popping, and then you got them 35s on there that's just, but they not bringing all of the work you put into that truck. 
So what you do, you come back and you hit it with that armor all, that shine, that bow. And then you put the, so that spray on those rims and then you polish up the chrome. That's the accent. And it pays honor to all of the work that you did on the truck. So as it is in leather crafting, a good edge burnish pays honor to all of that tooling and stitching and lacing that you've done. So now what I use it for, now I'm going to come back with some gum track and I'm going to come and gum track those edges and I'm going to hit it with that burlap or with, with those, those den, that denim uh, britches one more time and get that heat going and it's just going to keep burnishing and, and making it more solid. Then after that, I'm going to come back with my edge coat because all of the work is done, this is every all of this stuff is just building and building on top of the next phase. Hey, look, I hope that this got you further down the road and gave you a little bit of more insight about burnishing. You don't have to, you don't have to, you can, but it's not necessary. You don't have to go out here and buy all of this stuff. You don't have to go out here and get this DC motor and all of that stuff, especially when you guys are first starting out and you're getting used and comfortable to your tools. These are things that you build up on in leather work to keep making your work better. So wherever you are right now, if you don't have those burnishing tools, and one thing I do tell you again, I do encourage you to get those, get those edges, but here's another way how you can get around even the edges. You take that same pair of denim and you just wrap it around that work. Now your hands or your fingers have these little things, what we call joints on your phalanges right here. And you wrap that right there. And then you put this other part of the belt right there in the crease of the palm of your hand right here where the knuckles at. And you just pull it, pull it. You want to go back and wet it again with your sponge. And then you just want to keep pulling. This will round your edges, especially on belts and things like that. Especially. Now, if you don't have that, guess what? You do have a mallet or a maul. Whatever you're using to tool with, you take that, you lay this belt on the edge of your table, and you take that maul, and you do the same thing. You just rounding and rubbing off those corners down the side of that. And you want to angle this at an angle to keep going. So use what you got to get to where you need to be. Hey, y'all. Thank y'all for chilling with me, man. Thank y'all for the support that you guys have given me. Uh, we're constantly growing. We're constantly getting new subscribers. We're constantly getting new people that's asking a lot of questions. Thank you for your comments. Just thank you. Thank you. It took a long time for me to get to this point to where I can just share some of the things that I have been blessed with and given. This is the Leather Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters. Keep crafting, keep practicing, and I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.